Hey, Charlotte, come in here. Yeah. Do you want me to read you your fortune? <gasps> Is that her? Scary, but yeah. Have you done one of these before? <laughs> They're really easy. You just have to make sure you're listening really closely to what the cards are trying to tell you. OK, I'm listening. OK, here's your first one. The Seven of Cups. You have a big decision ahead of you. And the Seven of Cups says not to rush it, though, you know? OK, well, I was literally just thinking about what to make for dinner. Well, what did I say? The cards know everything. OK. The Knight of Wands. Interesting. So, responsibilities that you've neglected in the past, yeah, they're going to come back to haunt you. Spooky? Mm. What does that mean? Hmm. Could it maybe be talking about... Oh, the dishes? Could it maybe be saying you should do your dishes? Wow. OK, because I've left a huge pile next to the sink. I never do my dishes. <gasps> How did it know that? Oh, the spirits. They watch everything. The chariot. So this one's saying that you need to have shorter showers in the morning because you're using all the hot water. OK. That's too accurate. I love long showers. Oh. I didn't know there was a card for that. Ooh. So cool. All right. Oh, the Queen of Swords. This is a biggie. Are you listening? Yes. When you die, you're going to go to hell for eternity. Unless you stop eating everyone's food out of the fridge. OK, now that is starting to freak me out, because that is so me. I always eat other people's food from the fridge. Yeah, I know. This one says that if you finish the milk, don't put the empty bottle back in the fridge. This one says don't use the flat card to pay for your wine. And this one says don't invite your friends around on a Monday at midnight for drinks. And this one's Wait. like... Why are they all the same? actually start cleaning the toilet properly when you get bathroom on the chore wheel because you really actually got to get in there and scrub properly. You can't just squirt and then bugger off. Okay, yes, I promise I'll scrub it. Good. Well, got, got more devil business to do, so... <laughs> Hail Satan. drawn the devil card. That means you must start cleaning the toilet. <laughs> Too scary, I guess. People are always trying to tell you what the future holds, but you don't have to listen to them. Define your own future. Be a visionary. Roll the intro. The citizens In the words of legendary Ototahi poet scribe, congratulations, you made it! Welcome to the end. We've covered a lot of ground in the last five episodes. We've talked about being the government, influencing the government, people power, money power, occupation, education, and the Santa Parade, which, it bears repeating, is still too far from my house. So, there you go. Now you can go out and make the world a better place by changing the way we... Um... 
Huh. Okay. So, you know how to do a campaign, but how do you know what to campaign for? What are you actually going to change about the world? How do you figure out what a better world even looks like? Let's check the big book. Once upon a time in 1975, a sprightly 23-year-old called Marilyn Waring got elected to Parliament. When she arrived, she was like, Well, Parliament sure seems to be mostly dudes. I wonder if that's caused any problems in society. I guess we'll wait and see. After three terms, she left Parliament and went back to uni to study political economics. At uni, she read a few textbooks and went, Wow, economics sure seems to be mostly about dudes. Why is no one talking about all the unpaid work that women do, like childcare? And someone said, why don't you write a book about it? And she went, okay, I will. And she did. That book was called Counting for Nothing, and it's all about how the main measure of economies, GDP, really sucks. Her book said stuff like, if all you're measuring is money, then crashing an oil tanker into an iceberg is awesome for your economy, because you'll spend so much money cleaning it up. And also, if you don't get paid for your work, then as far as the government's concerned, it doesn't even exist and you don't matter. When her book came out, it made a big splash. Feminists around the world were like, she's right, women's work is undervalued. And economists around the world were like, it appears that her assertions are technically correct, I suppose. Next minute, the UN starts publishing the Human Development Report, which focuses on well-being instead of income. And a bunch of countries start going, huh, I guess we should give people money for looking after their family members, because that's actually extremely valuable work that we need people to do. And what did Marilyn Waring do after changing the world? She went, well, that was fun, but I'm bored now, so I'm going to go be a goat farmer. So she went and became a goat farmer. The end. So, how did Marilyn Waring come up with an idea to change the world? The short answer is, she went to uni to study economics. But the slightly longer, more helpful answer is she went to uni to study economics and brought with her something very important. A healthy packed lunch. No, it is. It's just a joke. Uh, she brought her very own unique set of experiences, values and perspectives. Her time in Parliament gave her a strong feminist bent that the complicated yet boring field of economics desperately needed. By taking a feminist lens to economics, she found a missing piece of the puzzle. All she had to do was tell people about it in a book, and the governments and activists took it from there. Her contribution was just what third wave feminism needed. No one in the movement had ever had such an up close and personal experience of government accounts, so counting for nothing was just the breakthrough they needed. If academics stay connected to their communities, it can save them a lot of work. If you're looking for an idea to make the world a better place, most people will be happy to tell you what they're worried or angry or frustrated about, which is a pretty good place to start. So that's one way to make the world better. Be like Marilyn Waring and take a good, hard look at society. Learn lots of stuff and then write a book about all the problems you can find. But there's another way to come up with your idea to change the world. Look forwards. Sometimes the challenge you face isn't that no one's pointed out the problem or that not enough people know about the problem. Sometimes the challenge is that fixing the problem seems so unachievable that people don't know where to start. So another way you can help a campaign is to dream. And I'm not talking about that dream where your hands are made out of jelly. I'm talking about having a specific vision for the future. Pretend for a moment that nothing is unachievable and start getting specific about what the future can, should and will look like. Don't worry about your strategy for now. Someone will figure that out later. That was the idea behind Matike Mai Aotearoa, the independent working group for constitutional transformation. Matike Mai was established in 2010 by the Iwi Chairs Forum to address a problem. Nobody could say what a New Zealand constitution that was grounded in the Treaty of Waitangi and the Declaration of Independence would actually look like, which made it very hard to work towards. It's like trying to get to a house party, but nobody told you the address. I mean, you could, you could try to follow the sound of people talking, but, but there's a decent chance you'll end up in the wrong place. So, the working group, led by Chair Margaret Mutu and convener Moana Jackson, started dreaming up some proposals for a new constitution. And how did they do that? Well, a constitution's no good if it doesn't reflect the values of the people it represents. So they went to the people and asked them what they reckoned it should look like. 
Over a few years, Mata Mai held over 300 hui all over the country, talking to everyone they could. Experts, historians, leaders, elders, youngers, and even middle-aged people. And when they were done, they collated their notes, typed up a report, and presented their findings. Six models for a new constitution of Aotearoa New Zealand. All of a sudden, the return to equal power sharing between Tangata Whenua and Tangata Tiriti seemed a whole lot closer. Which is good, because that's what we agreed to in Waitangi in the first place. Sometimes it seems like some things are allowed to change, and other things are set in stone. Sure, you can vote for a different party or change a law here or there, but there always has to be a parliament that runs a certain way, and we always have to resolve disputes in a court of law. But here's the thing. It's all made up. The whole thing is just people doing the same thing today that they did yesterday. The only thing stopping us from doing a completely different thing tomorrow is that it would be a logistical nightmare to get everyone on the same page. Doesn't mean we can't do it. It doesn't matter how big and old and scary they are, systems are just people. And people can change. People change all the time. So, what the hell are you watching YouTube for? Go! Get out! Go and make the world a better place. It won't be easy, but it's worth a shot. Good luck.